Hey, what's happening everybody? Today, I'm gonna to give you a closer look at an insect that you might locate in your garden. And if you see this, you wanna make sure at this point, you're not doing any type of pest controls, any sprays. This is a beneficial insect. So I'm in the process right now of removing these fava bean plants from my corn patch. I had interplanted this crop, the fava bean, in this particular instance I'm using as a nitrogen fixation plant. Fava bean will grow nitrogen root nodules on the root mass. So as soon as you start to see the plants begin to flower, if you're growing them for this purpose, because they have edible qualities as well, you want to go ahead and chop that plant away, leaving the root system in the ground to feed the surrounding plants, in this case, the corn. But over here towards the end of the bed, I've got some fava bean plants that have been getting attacked by aphids pretty good. But we've got some other insects showing up now on these plants that I want to highlight for you. So as you can see, we've got lots of aphid activity on mainly the tips of these fava bean plants growing over here. But check this out, we've also got some beautiful lady beetles or ladybugs here which are helping to mitigate the aphid issue. Most folks are aware ladybugs are a beneficial insect and they're gonna help you to restore a natural balance in your garden by helping to remedy an imbalance of aphids in your garden. But along with the aphids, you see this little insect here. And many folks might not be aware, but this is actually a beneficial as well. This is part of the lady beetle's life cycle. This is when they're in the larva stage. Now these are very easy to identify as they have a scaly outer skin. Looks almost like a small alligator. They're mostly black and they've got yellow or orangish spots on them or bands. So this is the second stage of the lady beetle's life cycle. There's four stages in total. The first stage being the embryonic stage, you may see small clusters of little yellow eggs. And then after that, they hatch into the larva. From there, they turn into the pupae, the pupal stage, and that kind of looks like a cross between both the larva and the ladybugs. Then finally, you have the imaginal stage where they turn into adult lady beetles. So at this larva stage, they begin to eat the aphids. Just one larva can eat between three to 500 aphids in its lifespan, or 12 to 15 aphids per day. And these plants are absolutely loaded with both lady beetles and the larva. So this is truly a blessing. This is something, if you see, it's worth celebrating because once again, we wanna create a natural balance ecosystem in our gardens. So if things get out of hand early on and you're not seeing ladybugs or the larva in your garden, then some organic application of neem oil, something like that, can work well to help remedy the situation. This is especially important, in my opinion, with perennial plants like fruit trees, as the aphids can cause a lot of damage not just harm the tree itself to the point where it could even kill the tree back, but it can really stunt the tree's growth and affect your harvest. But sometimes some of the annuals that you grow, such as the fava, may turn into what we refer to as attractor plants, helping to consolidate your aphid problem all into one little area. So if you're planting some of your annuals in abundance and scattering them throughout different areas of the garden, which I recommend because I've got other fava bean patches that aren't affected by aphids whatsoever, then you can leave some of these plants in your garden, not just to consolidate your aphid problem, but to begin that life cycle where the beneficials come in and begin to balance out the pests that have come into your garden. So at this point, even though I really do need to remove the majority of these plants, I'm gonna leave the few that have all of this life taking place here so that those ladybugs can go through their entire life cycle. I wanna see them completely develop and then go throughout the rest of the garden. Here on this pluary tree, for example, you can see we've got these leaves towards the tip of the new growth that are curling up, and it almost looks like peach leaf curl, which is mainly gonna affect your trees like peach and nectarine. But some of your other stone fruits like plums, pluaries, and such cherry trees, if you see this, more than likely it's caused by aphids. Now, I did treat this tree early on, but then just a few days ago, I started noticing ladybug activity on this tree. So at this point, we're gonna let everything run its course and hope for the best. Back over in this area of the garden, you can see I've got another little patch of fava beans here. I'm gonna let these fully mature for more seed stock. We may harvest some of these pods for the beans as well. 
I make a delicious fava bean chili out of them. But over here, you can see we don't have any aphid issue whatsoever. And this is why I'm a big fan of not just planting out my annuals and rows, but having patches here or there. So you may or may not have the space to do that, but if you do, you may want to consider using that technique as well, just to ensure that you're always going to have a healthy crop of whatever it is you're growing. But there's still many other fava beans growing in this particular patch that don't have a single aphid on them. So at this point, we're headed in the right direction. We've got a good balance of pests to beneficials, and at this point, I'm confident that they're going to go ahead and remedy out the situation, which is great news. On a side note, I'll give you the daily look up at the sky. I woke up this morning once again to completely blacked out clouds all throughout the sky. I went ahead and did my declaration. And you can see how it's starting to clear out right here above my garden. Guys, I wouldn't be sharing with you my technique for helping to bring the sun into my garden if it wasn't working for me. So if you've been following along on the channel, then you're aware of exactly what I've been doing. But for those of you that are new here, or if you haven't been following along, I'll just quickly share with you. What I like to do when I have these densely overcast days, which is almost every day now, we're like five days in a row, except for patches that open up, almost always just over my garden. What I do, being a man of faith, is I declare over my garden and the skies over my garden that this is God's territory, God's property. And anything that's coming against the natural order of things, anything unnatural helping to haze out the sky, I demand that it leave, I evict it from this space. What I want to see here are puffy white clouds, sunshine poking through, blue skies. And I do this on a daily basis. And if you look in the distance, you'll see nothing but dense cloud cover. But again, right above my garden, we've got this breakup. And the puffy white clouds are beginning to show up. The darker clouds are disappearing and the blue sky and the sunshine are poking through. If it works for me, it can work for you. So with that, I hope you got something out of today's video. If you found it helpful or entertaining in any way, sure would appreciate it if you smash the thumb button for me. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. New uploads every week, sometimes every day. And I'm always sharing with you all the different growings on in the garden. So with that, have yourself a good one. Until next time, this is Dan from PlantAbundance.com. Take care, I'll be talking to you again soon.